For Kruma Media's policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai, leader of the UDM party, Bantu Holomisa, joins me to discuss the crucial 2024 elections and the party's manifesto. With corruption scandals and abuses of power negatively impacting savings delivery and slowing economic growth, how will the UDM ensure a clean governance and restore the connection between the people and their government? Well, the first thing uh, is for the new government, which uh, possibly will be part, will, will, that UDM will be part of. We would have to table the Zondo Commission's uh, findings and use those findings as a guide to restore dignity in our way of doing things, starting from the time when the budget is announced and that uh, if the money is allocated for road maintenance, for job creation and so on, it has to go there without being uh, directed to other areas where it was not supposed to go to. But uh, those areas, of course, would have been corruptly identified with a view to get more money illicitly to the powers that be. And how will your party untie the tangled web of corruption that has crippled South Africa's state-owned enterprises? The best way there, again, is to do an evaluation of uh, what is the real problem. The ANC has been misleading the public and not telling us the truth. It was the UDM, for instance, who consistently told the South Africans, ANC government has sold SAA for 51 rands, and this thing must be stopped because it is not in the interest of the country. But it's the people who want to throw a javelin so as to make sure that uh, after they have retired, they find a company which would be a cash cow for them. So we finally succeeded in that campaign because SAA deal is off. But what we may have to look at in terms of these SOEs, at least the state, whatever part, private public partnership may come out, the state must retain 51% on behalf of South Africans. Then if one is coming with 49%, they must come up with the capital as well as the skills. And later on, those skills must be imparted to South Africa. And Mr. Holomisa, your party highlighted that the ANC's economic policies have not delivered more jobs or more investments. So how will the UDM mobilize investment to improve the productive capacity of the economy? There will be no investors who will come to South Africa if the security is not uh, good in terms of, one, the crime, the people who are murdering other people, because right now South Africa is viewed as a capital of the continent, which is murdering people. So we need to change that uh, perception, make sure that uh, we restore law and order, and make sure that uh, we educate our people to be responsible, to report, crime in their areas and we would invest a lot in crime intelligence. Also, we need to make sure that we clean the law enforcement agencies because some of them have been uh, implicated in corrupt exercises. So the investments therefore will flow immediately once people see that there's stability the investment will also come once the people see that there's policy certainty. Right now, since 1994, this country has never had a consensus on what kind of macroeconomic policy we should be following. So it is necessary, therefore, that uh, we stabilize the situation quickly so that the investment can come and in the process job creation would also be uh, created.
And what is UDM's stance on cadre deployment? And if elected to govern, will your party replace existing public servants? The best way and uh, the acceptable standard would be to do a skills auditing. And such a program must be done by the Public Service Commission. Public Service Commission's powers in the last 30 years have been usurped by the Lutuli House, which have been deploying uh, mediocrity or applying mediocrity when it comes to placing people. So the powers of the Public Service Commission would be returned back and also that uh, the portfolio or any post which is need to be filled will be advertised and the requirements of, of needed in that post would be uh, advertised. Then the Public Service Commission's work will be easy to choose people. And lastly, the politicians must never be allowed to issue political directives laced with corruption when it comes to issues related to tenders. There is no need for a politician to delve his or her nose in the issue of issuing of tenders. The best way which we would want to see is for a political head or a minister or a councillor to do a political oversight, but not to run the administration, there are accounting officers who will be employed to do that. That is DGs and, and municipal managers and so on and so on. And how will UDM policies on electricity and energy transition bring an end to load trading? The best way for a new government would be to appoint an independent uh, evaluator, preferable Experts who would come from outside South Africa. We have bilateral agreements with many countries, and I'm sure other countries can assist us for free just to tell us what is the problem with ESCOM. Because ANC has been lying to the people of South Africa for the last 16 years. One time they will tell you that uh, the reason for load shedding is because the coal is wet or that uh, the quality of the coal is not good, or that uh, the plants have not been maintained, or some equipment is, or plugs are tripping the, the entire system. So we need to, first of all, have the information, and then we can plan from there. Lastly, on the issue of uh, electricity, I noticed this obsession and speed with which we are so crazy about moving away from fossil fuels to renewables. I think uh, whilst we appreciate that there is a need for that, but we must make sure that uh, the coal we have, when, it, when the time is ripe for to be replaced, we must have had a thorough investigation I don't think it's going to be wise to only rely on the on the sun and uh, uh, to provide uh, uh, electricity for us. So these solar panels, if, for instance, a climate change comes and then there's heavy rains and, 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 and then it's cold, obviously it's going to affect the generation of electricity. Whilst we are talking about generation of electricity, if we move from fossil fuels to renewables, it's clear that uh, the transmission equipment or infrastructure would have to be replaced. And in replacing that infrastructure to transmit electricity to municipalities for distribution, surely we are going to need a lot of money. It's running into trillions. But we still have a backlog of the past, the balance, the imbalances and backlogs of the past, where some people are still in need of housing. We still need to fix our roads. We still need to fix our education and also to recover monies which were stolen by the ANC as 
the Commission of Zondo has said that they also looted the state resources. So it's not going to be easy to fix ESCOM without knowing what is the cause. Hence, we are recommending that we must get people from outside and tell us exactly what is the cause of this load shedding because ANC is lying to us. And Mr. Holomisa, your party is of the view that it is necessary to establish a crime prevention ministry to bring the ministries of justice, police, correctional services, defense, and na national intelligence under one umbrella. So how will this ensure a long-term solution to crime and violence in the country? Right now, there is a lack of coordination amongst the law enforcement agencies. Police would arrest someone who has raped a, a, a woman. And then the following day, this person is back into the community. The next thing, uh, this individual can easily uh, kill uh, the potential witnesses. And you will find that uh, the police are demoralized because the people, the courts or the NPA are doing a different exercise altogether. So we need, therefore, a stronger department to coordinate these issues. Look at the NPA right now. I'm sure in their offices there are piles and piles and piles of tokens because cases, people appear in court one day, and then after that they postpone cases whenever this individual has to come to court. The only thing is, is, that is being done is to postpone the cases. No, we cannot operate a state like that. So we have to have a special courts. We have to have a competent NPA people. We have to have competent investigators. So it is for that reason that we, we need at least a ministry which can coordinate all these activities. And part of that would be to look at are these people highly trained? Are they equipped with relevant equipment? And so on and so on. And the UDM notes that a purely proportional representation system like ours renders the electorate toothless as parliamentarians are not held accountable should they not perform. So how will your party's hybrid electoral system function? We advocate for a mixed system where we have a proportional representation system and also introduce a, introduce a constituency-based system to replace this confusion which has been done by the ANC government, where they are not allowing introduction of constituency-based system. We need to demarcate South Africa in terms of constituency. Proportional representation is not accounting completely to the people of South Africa. Let the voters choose their own MP and vote for that MP, whether it's a member of the ANC or another party. But let's introduce constituency-based system. And lastly, we need to have separate uh, elections for a president of the country. Let us uh, improve the situation. For instance, the current president is only elected by 3,500 delegates in the ANC conference. And that individual is forced on us because people are voting for a party. Yes, let the any person who wants to be a president stand there and campaign and say they want to be president. And then the people vote for a president, not to vote for a party, and then party goes to a, a boardroom and chose a president for us. It's not on. And there seems to be emerging consensus that there will be no outright winner of the 2024 national and provincial elections. So should the UDM form part of a coalition government, what qualities and principles will the party be looking at from other parties? And would the UDM participate in a coalition with the ANC if the ANC falls short of a 50% majority? The United Democratic Movement uh, has no preconditions as to who will we be working with when it comes to coalition. Uh, I think I've traveled uh, the world and I've seen 
a number of countries in a, a number of political parties in different countries where you see that if there is no outright winner you will see that uh, a christian democrats would work with the hardline socialists uh, in the interest of uh, of the people of their countries so i think uh, the time for us to be non partisan is now let us not be partisan let us be non partisan in other words we put the interest of the country first if the anc uh, invites utm or any other party or if utm invites the anc vice versa we need to put our manifesto on the table and compare notes and find out how can we integrate those manifestos in order to serve our people it must not be about positions and so on but if we say for instance in our manifesto that a minister will not issue political directives which are laced with corruption if anc is prepared to work with us on those grounds then we can work with them but if they are going to continue to deploy people and undermine public service commission and also allow ministers to loot the state resources or even allow the anc itself to loot the state resources then we cannot sign that agreement of coalition we look elsewhere and lastly mr holemisa you have been the face of the udm for close to three decades how would you describe your style of leadership we have an open door policy that's why everybody in south africa when they have problems if you can visit our website uh, www.utm.org.za you will find that many people are asking for us to appeal and we have written numerous letters to ministers and the presidency and they have been helped in a number of areas right now the udm is busy campaigning for the government to help the ex mine workers to get their uif funds also to help the ex civil servants of south africa and tbv states and non independent homelands who were not given their pensions or that their pensions were not calculated properly so that is what the udm is doing and what the people know is that if they approach us we do work and i insist in all our public reps if they have to do the work they must keep the public informed we write letters not quietly or privately it's open letters so that the people can see that we are doing the work but lastly discipline is key in everything you do if you say let us meet at 11 o'clock you must be there 7 minutes before time ready to start the meeting so we need to inculcate this culture of ownership that i am working for south africa i'm working for the people of south africa before i say i want money for my friend and for my family i must make sure that tender goes to so and so that is not holomisa that was bantu holomisa speaking to crime media's polity about the crucial 2024 elections and the party's manifesto